Hi guys, it's Bree. Welcome to my channel, Just Breezy. And if you're not a subscriber, as always, I would love for you to consider being one. Just be sure to hit the bell for notifications because I don't want you to miss out. We upload weekly content to this channel. Now guys, if you're watching this, this is part two of our adoption story. November is Adoption Awareness Month. And I've had a lot of people ask, you know, hey, I know you have your son through adoption. Would you mind sharing your story or um, letting me know about your experience? You know, sometimes out of curiosity, which is okay. And other times because people are considering it or going through the process themselves. And I've said it before, I'm a firm believer that when we share our experiences with others, it lets people know that they're not alone in what they're going through. So we decided that I would um, tactfully, yet truthfully and respectfully share our adoption story because it's not just my story, it's our families, it's my son. Um, but yes, so this is part two. This is where we found out that our soon, our, our now son actually existed in the world. Um, just for a little background, my parents when I was younger, much younger, uh, I think it was around two, they divorced, my dad remarried, and my stepmom came to the marriage with two children, my two stepbrothers. And, you know, we didn't really, I don't know, we didn't have like a close relationship throughout life just because we lived in separate homes and we would see each other from time to time. Um, and as we got older, my stepbrothers, they moved, you know, out of state. And one of my stepbrothers got into a relationship with a woman and they became pregnant. And this woman, she didn't quite make all the, the best decisions for herself in life. I will put it that way. And my stepbrother will say that he was at a point in his life where he wasn't making the best decisions either. And he had some legal, some legal issues that prevented him from being a parent. And when his girlfriend at the time um, went to the hospital to, you know, she was in labor to give birth, they took this baby and immediately put him in the NICU because, oh man, because the decisions that she made for herself affected him. And he was born with a lot of things in his system that had no business being in a baby's body. So he needed time to, to have all those things taken out of his body. And he needed time to become strong and healthy. And um, so he spent some time in the hospital. And when he was deemed healthy and strong enough, the state put him right away into foster care. And thankfully, from what I understand, the woman who had him for his first 18 months was very loving and cared for him very much. Um, but my stepmom, my stepmom, when she found out that this was her biological grandson, she, she was determined to just get him out of foster care and bring him to where we all are, you know, um, and be part of our family and take care of him. So she went down to the state he was from and petitioned the courts and they agreed. They said, you know what? He has family, his biological family. Um, yeah, we'll put him in your custody. So my stepmom spent some time down in the state he was from, spent time bonding. And then she came home with an 18 month old. She came home with this, with this baby, with this, with this little boy. And my stepmom was in her early seventies. My dad was in his late sixties. And I can remember the first time meeting him, like instantly falling in love and just having sort of all this like mix of emotions of like, how the hell are they going to do this? Now, my stepmom is a very young 70 something year old. Like, Lots of pep in her step, lots of energy, personality. So in that case, I was like, yeah, she can handle this. She's had children of her own years ago. And, but it's still, if I'm being honest, you know, I had, I had concerns about it. Um, but for two years, my dad and my stepmom, they loved him. They took care of him. They supported him. They made sure he had social opportunities and 
we were his family. I was Aunt Bree and my dad, my husband was Uncle Mike and my daughter was his cousin and our family was his family. And it didn't matter where the genetic line stopped, um, where the bloodline stopped, he was our family and that was it. It was, it was instant. You are part of this entire circle and we are here for you. And my dad and my stepmom had him for two years. And over that time, there, there came a point where we started taking him on the weekends because my stepmom had some medical issues and it was getting close to the summer of that year. And we knew we were gonna be taking our daughter to like Adventureland and the beach and family parties. And we wanted him to sort of experience that. And so we decided to take him, you know, we had a conversation and we, we were taking him on the weekends. And then my stepmom got better and I didn't want to not take him on the weekends anymore. I wanted to still do that and still help them and help him and give him the experiences that we were having as a family. So Fridays after work, we would meet halfway, we would do the switch off and then Sunday nights or very early Monday mornings before I had work, I would bring him back. Oh crap, <laughs> sorry. You know what it is, there are certain points that just bring up, ugh, it's okay. So, there were times during those drop-offs that my daughter would be with us, or my husband, or sometimes it was just me, but every time, one of us would cry on the way home. We knew we would see him again in like five days, but it was just, we loved him, we loved him so much and giving him back, and it wasn't that we were giving him back to some awful situation. He was with my dad and my stepmom who loved him and loved him dearly and he was very happy with. But it was just hard, it was difficult and I know it was difficult for them too. <sighs> and during those two years we had had difficult and hard conversations about the future and sort of our thoughts on it and their thoughts. And, you know, honestly, we didn't always see eye to eye and that's okay. You know, it's hard when there's love and there's a child involved and everyone is in a good place of intention, but sometimes those places don't always match up. It just is what it is. But we spent two years of being one big family and helping to support him through it. So then after the two years, there came a point where my stepmom and my dad realized that, you know what, maybe the, the better overall situation for him would be for us to start petitioning the state that he was from, that we could have custody of him and work towards adoption. And when we had that conversation, um, I was so incredibly excited and scared and it was like every emotion wrapped up into one and my husband, I knew it was really difficult for him. He knew how much I wanted this and we just, we weren't quite there at the same time yet and that was okay, you know, that was okay. But I had spent the next, I don't know, a handful of days on the phone with the lawyer and, and the, the child advocate and whatever other players that were in this whole situation from the state he was in. And I just kept saying, I know I'm not his blood relative. I know that, but could you please work with us and please consider allowing us to petition for adoption because it doesn't matter that we're not his blood. It doesn't matter. Like he will be loved and cared for and he'll have family that he's genetically tied to and all of that. And they were like, yeah. Absolutely, like this seems like a good situation. So I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. And we had to go through parenting classes. You know, people are like, really? You already have a kid? Doesn't matter, it's a requirement. And I kind of like that it's a requirement. So we went through parenting classes and one of them was sort of like a support group, which was actually really nice to be in a room filled with people that were going for like the same end goal of adoption, but not one person had the same journey of how they were getting there. Everyone had different stories of like, you know, family adoption, like we were experiencing or adoption overseas or whatever it is, but we all had different journeys with the same goal. Um, we had to have 
visits to the home to count the smoke detectors and check the cabinets and the child locks and the layout of the home. And we had these long interviews about why I thought Mike would be a great dad, why he thought I would be a great mom. They had to speak to our daughter. We had to give references. Oh, it was just like, woo. And thankfully the players on this side, you know, in our state, they were lovely. They were lovely through it and they got us through it. And, whew, my goodness. And then a year later from the time that my stepmom and I had this conversation, he was placed with us. He was placed with us for sort of like, okay, now he's in our custody and, and this transition period will happen. And it was so frustrating at times. Like he would get hurt and I'd have to take him to a doctor and I'd have to make sure I had this massive binder of paperwork. And then I remember, you know, he has celiacs and he needed an endoscopy. So we went to the hospital and because I was missing a piece of paperwork, they just canceled it. He was in his little gown and they were like, no. And I'm like, but he needs this. And they're like, but you're not his mom. And I almost put her through a wall. <laughs> Cause in my heart, I'm like, yeah, I am. But legally I wasn't. So we had to go, you know, around with this binder of paperwork, basically everywhere we went for the, just in case. We needed permission to take them across state lines to go to like Hershey Park. <laughs> like there was just permission for everything. But then in November of last year was his adoption day. And it was, it was beautiful. It really was. The judge had my daughter come up and read a child's book to her new brother in front of this room of like our family and court officers and people that were involved in it. and. I, of course, I was sobbing, um, but it was beautiful. You know, and prior to that, we had another sort of adoption uh, ceremony over the phone with the judge from the state he was at, which was definitely a little less personal, um, but that judge made it as wonderful as he could. And it was really just this sort of like emotional experience of like, holy crap, <laughs> legally now, legally he's ours. Like we are a family of four, he's our son. Um, and then it was like, okay, then we go home and it's like, okay, this is life now. This is like, things are gonna get real. Um, and I wanna discuss that. I wanna discuss sort of this past year because it's really important for people going through it. So I'm gonna stop here and I'm gonna say thank you for listening so far. And I'm going to ask that if you still have interest in this story to check out part three. Um, but again, if you have any comments or questions, leave them there and I'd love to answer any any questions you have or read any stories that you have to share. So guys, as always, thanks so much for checking it out and um, we'll talk some more soon.